Did you know that healthy eyelids play a crucial part in having healthy eyes? In this episode of OcuTalk, we're talking with Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez about eyelid-related conditions like blepharitis, how they can lead to dry, irritated eyes, and what can be done to prevent them from happening. Dr. Gonzalez? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name is Nick, and today we have a very special guest coming to you from Orlando, Florida, with Magruder Laser Vision, Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez. Dr. Gonzalez, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, well, before we get started, Dr. Gonzalez, I just wanted to uh, kind of let you have the floor here. Tell us about your background and just tell us a little bit about your specialty. Of course. So I am presently the clinical director at Magruder Laser Vision, which is a cataract and laser surgery uh, practice. Uh, before working here, I actually worked with an oculoplastic surgeon in New York. And prior to that, I was studying optometry at Nova Southeastern University. Fantastic. That's great. Uh, so I understand that you have a passion for dry eye disease, uh, specifically the role that the eyelids play. Can you kind of explain that relationship uh, to us? Absolutely. So there are lots of really good reports and literature that tell us all about the ocular surface and everything that we need to do to take care of it. And there are wonderful medications that are designed to help with that. But what people sometimes forget about is the actual mechanism that those things get spread on the surface of our eyes. So the lids sometimes get overlooked and that's something that I am trying to focus on because a lot of times, a lot of the issues that people are having could certainly be improved upon if they took care of the lids. So imagine that something like blepharitis is a term that most everyone has you know, never heard of unless you're in the eye care industry. But most patients I see on a daily basis have, at least to some degree, have dealt with it before. Well, you know, you just talked about blepharitis, and I was hoping that maybe you can go into a little more detail about it, like what it is and how it impacts the eyes. Of course. So blepharitis, you know, you hear that term, you're like, oh my gosh, what is that? It's really just a very fancy term for having debris, dandruff, and dander just kind of build up on the eyelids. So specifically, this focuses on where the lashes meet the lids. And so I, I usually explain it to patients, think of when you have dandruff on your scalp, it's, it's kind of like a buildup around the hair follicles and around the margin, uh, so to speak, that cause that issue. Fantastic. Uh what other eyelid conditions can contribute to dry eye? So aside from having lashes, we have little oil glands that have their openings right on that lid margin. So if you can imagine having those oil glands get capped up can also create a big issue because the oil layer that those oil glands create are what keeps the tears from evaporating immediately off the surface of our eyes. So things like you know, chalazion or cordiola or more commonly known styes are big issues for people, but they stem from things like ocular rosacea or having meibomian gland disease. So all of these things kind of tie together. It's just some people will experience some version of it and not realize that they went together in the first place. I uh, understand. I understand completely. Um, and you've talked about, we talked about eyelashes. And then, so I also wanted to talk about, ask you about, um, makeup and like eyelash extensions, how can, how does that contribute to dry eye? Of course. So this is something more and more I have been talking about with my patients. So before this is something like we would go out for cocktails after work and people would just kind of randomly chat about it. And now more and more, I see patients every day that have beautiful lash extensions, but will come in and will have a red eye all of a sudden, or they're telling me, man, I just, I can't stand my lid, it's, it's very itchy and I kind of want to rub and you don't, you know, if you're familiar with eyelash extensions, you don't want them to fall out because you pay a good amount of money to get them. So yeah. 
proper care of them is a really important part of having them. I think they're wonderful so long as, you know, you're making sure that you're cleaning them properly. Most people, you know, most professionals that put these on will explain that you need to make sure that you're cleaning with a foam cleanser. And most people are really good about it. They're just, there's a balance between making sure that you don't have them fall out, but also making sure that you're keeping the ocular surface and the lids uh, clean and, and, and clear of all debris. Excellent. Excellent. And we've talked about dry eye and that when you talk to your patients about dry eye, do you have any particular like um, regimen that you like them to use? Like when it comes to dry eye, let's say like they come in, they have dry eye and you tell them, hey, you should be using this. Is there a specific regimen that you like to use? Of course. And so at our clinic, we actually have a dry eye clinic that we are putting together. Uh, not everyone that comes in needs to have like the most intense treatment. I try to approach it from a very simple, like if you can take care of it at home with over-the-counter products, that's usually the way to go. So it's funny, OcuSoft happens to be one of my go-to products. Uh, I actually... Aside from recommending it to all of our patients that we are doing cataract surgery and LASIK on, we also, or I also recommend it to all my patients who I see that have had surgery even years after. So usually what I will recommend is a brooder mask for warm compresses, usually for about 30 seconds, a minute, if you really just kind of want to relax and, and absorb the, the, the warmth. And then you want to open up a little package of the OcuSoft scrubs and kind of, I explain to people, I'm like, you wrap it around your finger and you get right up against the lid margin where the lashes meet the lid and you kind of massage and clean all that stuff off of there. Kind of like if you were giving yourself a very thorough shampoo or conditioning treatment on your scalp. And so you definitely want to rinse all of that stuff off because you're taking stuff off of there and artificial tears on the surface of the eye after to make sure that you're getting rid of everything. So morning and evening is really good to do this routine daily, ideally. And then throughout the day, depending on how severe the dryness is, I recommend artificial tears or some people need prescription medication to kind of help them out or on rare occasions, you know, punctal plugs. So there's lots of tools that we can use to help patients with dry eye. I, I wanted to ask you, um, are there any new developments that you can tell us about? As a matter of fact, yes. So dry eye, uh, without getting into too many specifics, has had a very prominent um, product that has been prescribed very often for patients because it's really been the only game in town and it's essential and necessary. There are so many new medications and treatment protocols that are available. I mean, a couple of years ago, Restasis <laughs> was the only game in town and now we have so many other medications that we can prescribe that are sometimes better options for people and not just because of insurance coverage, but because of you know how quickly the onset is or it just, it helps with their specific type of dry eye. Well, that's amazing to hear. I'm glad that there's new developments out there for dry eye. And uh, was there anything else that you wanted to tell our viewers about? Honestly, the best thing that I, or the only other thing that I wanted to add is if you ever have any questions or if you ever wanna reach out, I am happy to answer them. It's what I do for fun, which sounds really lame, but it's <laughs> my truth. Uh, I actually have a page on Instagram that's called uh, Dr. G underscore eyes to see, and I would love to see you guys and have you reach out. Well, fantastic. Dr. Gonzalez, thank you so much for joining us. Again, everyone, that was Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez from Magruder Laser Vision in Orlando, Florida. Thank you again, doctor. Thanks for having me.